Norway. From DVD John in 2003 to outright censorship on the internet in 2015. This is Liberty Sport, week 37. This report is presented by Private Internet Access. Norway has been in focus this past week. It is a small country uh, way up north in the Arctic. It actually crosses into well into the Arctic Circle and has some frozen barren islands well, 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 well up north. Although most of the country is in at least hospitable regions. It's on the western coast of Scandinavia. And as on the western coast of Scandinavia, it found oil in the late 1960s and is now an oil exporting nation. In fact, one of the richest in, uh, the, in the world, or at least in Europe, it has a purchasing power on parity with Switzerland, making it stand out clearly in European purchasing power. It is one of few countries that are not part of the European Union and yet are in the middle of Europe. They've had referendums on this, a number of numerous referendums, and have declined to join the European Union. In 2003, Norway has its first bout with the internet when a uh, young, talented person named John Lech Johansen wrote the so-called DCSS program. It was a program to decrypt DVDs, you know, those discs where you used to look at non-HD movies, and published that code openly. It was the first test of the European Union's InfoSource Directive, also known as the EUCD, European Union Copyright Directive, uh, which mirrors the United States DMCA which says you're not allowed to circumvent copy protection mechanisms. However, DVD John made a very strong point, one that still stands. The, the encryption on a DVD was never made to prevent copying. If you, prevent, if you copied the entire digital pattern, you could absolutely do that. And a DVD player would play the master and the copy just fine. It was never a copy protection mechanism. It was a playback protection mechanism. In other words, the movie industry wanted so badly to control how, where, when, and under what circumstance in general their movies were being played. So they actually required manufacturers of DVD players to sign various agreements with them in order to get access to the, to the encryption keys. John Lech Johansen broke this scheme, called, published DCSS openly. The CSS was the content scrambling system, the encryption for the DVDs, and was prosecuted for it in 2003. He was acquitted on all charges. The Norway Economic Crimes Unit appealed to the appeals court, where, where he was acquitted again in late 2003. This was the first victory for common sense in Norway. So it would seem like a very forward-thinking country. The problem, however, wasn't so much that it was forward-thinking as that it was oil-dependent. Actually, that's wrong. It's not oil-dependent. It just has an enormous amount of money from oil, but it's not really dependent on it. However, it would be more accurate to say that rather than having their very forward-thinking politicians, the copyright lobby just had not yet put its claws into Norway. That happened last week as a district court ordered censorship of the Pirate Bay and numerous other sites. This has never happened before in Norway. It has happened in the UK, it has happened in Denmark, but a district court in Norway ordered internet service providers to have their servers lie about whether the Pirate Bay exists or not. And when somebody asks their servers where, whether it does exist, they were in no, they were not instructed. They were mandated by a court order to lie and say that no, it does not exist. <laughs> now, fortunately, there's more than one side to this story here. This was a stupid court. They had known nothing about technology. They were basically aligning themselves with corporate interests because they sounded, I don't know, credible. You know, they arrive in a suit and tie and, and, and look professional. But what sets Norway apart here is what happened afterwards. 
the opposition politician Trina Skei Grande from the Venstre Liberal Party went out in media and condemned this internet censorship, saying that Norway has always stood up for freedom of speech and should always stand up for freedom of speech. While there may be problems here, she said, censorship is never the answer. And that's something radically different from what has happened in other countries. Calling a spade a spade like this has not happened in Denmark nor in UK. Obviously, the Norwegian Pirate Party couldn't resist springing to action in this case, so they promptly set up their own name server, which is not mandated by any court to lie, and therefore doesn't lie, and therefore tells the world where exactly where the Pirate Bay is located. Things, actions like this by a court are very, very serious. They are infractions of human rights. They're infractions of fundamental rights, as they're called in the European Union. Now, I mentioned that Norway is not part of the European Union, but it's part of an auxiliary network of countries which is still bound to European Union law. If you're looking at the European Union countries, you can see that a few of them on the outside of the European Union are part of this agreement. <laughs> Politicians in Oslo tend to call it fax legislation, meaning that new laws arrive by fax from Brussels. They're not very happy about it, but this is the part of it. In any case, any violation of fundamental rights like this one, like censorship, needs to meet three important criteria. It needs to be necessary, effective, and proportionate. These three words have very specific meanings. It needs to be necessary, meaning that there must be an identified need or there must be an identified problem to solve. Second, effective. The proposed solution must actually solve the identified problem. And third, proportionate. The proposed solution must not create worse problem, problems in the process. And this is where it gets interesting because a court in Den Haag, which is a Dutch city, better known as The Hague. Yes, that's where the International Criminal Court is. So it has very strong judicial tradition. But this was a mere appeals court, or that's not a mere appeals court, that sets a precedent across Europe, actually. An appeals court in Den Haag found that blocking, censoring, filtering, whatever you call it, censoring the Pirate Bay is neither effective nor proportionate. That's very important because that sets a precedent across Europe that censorship like this is blatantly illegal. Now, the problem here, obviously, is that this was a civil case where the copyright industry sued in net service providers. It is not a law matter. It was somebody requiring that they do their business in a slightly different way, but one which has immense effects on freedom of speech and censorship. The ISPs are probably not going to appeal this, just because it's not entirely in their interest short term. It is absolutely long term, or their business will be reduced to a one-way Disney conduit. But short term, it's much cheaper to just shut up and do as they're told. This is, this is why we can observe that freedom of speech is under assault from the copyright lobby and other corporate interests, and politicians must start to see the bigger picture here. I'm Rick Falkfinger, and this is Liberty's Report. Visit our sponsor, Private Internet Access. Good night. This report is presented by Private Internet Access. Liberty's report is produced using exclusively free software.